Hello Flow Rivers family, so today's devotional is going to be coming from Matthew 6 verse 25 to 34. My devotional has been something that has just been something that just been heavy on my heart. We're in a season of time, I don't even need to explain it to people, where a lot of us are worrying. It might not be about health, it might be about the future, it might be about how you're going to get your food, just every little thing might be causing you a lot of worry. So for me personally, I'm a crazy faith kind of person. I'm going to put my things on the list. I'm going to make a list and I'm going to believe God for the list and I'm going to be praying, praying, praying. But what has happened was, and God has shown me, what happened was there was an obsession, more of a focus on the things that I wanted to happen than on Him. And that actually, when my focus was no longer on Him, my faith was not aligned to that. And my faith was just trying to grab onto God knows what but it was not him. So that then turns into worry. You know, the opposite of faith is worry. So God really directed me to that and he gave me three pointers actually. And even when I'm trying to read something else, God's like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna focus on this. We're gonna focus on this until it becomes a habit that, you know, you're stuck with. So the first point, the, before we, I get into the first point, sorry, you know, God showed me that, you know, you know, concerning over food and stuff like that and worry is just not necessary. So the first point is no need to worry because it does not help. Um, I'll read verse 27. We'll go into verse 27 real quick. It says, which of you worry can add one cubit to his stature? Which another way of, another way of saying that is, can any of you add one moment to your lifespan by worrying? Think about it. If you need to pause to think about it, do. Now come back. The answer, the question was rhetorical, and the answer is no. You cannot add a moment onto your life by worrying. So why do it? Why dress for her as tragedy? Tragedy, sorry. Uh, why dress for her as tragedy by worrying? It does not add a moment or anything onto your life. It actually, what it does is take away. You start to focus on things that are not of him. You know, don't worry. So second point. No need to worry because God knows what you need. I'll share a quick personal story. I went for a job. I really felt like I was really told by the people that, you know, you're good for this job. This job is basically yours. Even when I prayed about the job, I had peace. I did not end up getting the job. I thought, what on earth was that peace that I felt about then? Now, fast forward, we're in a pandemic. That job that I went for, that role alongside with the entire company, was made redundant and now I know that God knew what I needed because what I didn't need was the redundancy so God really really knew what I needed in that moment point in time James 1 17 you know explains that every good and perfect thing comes from him from food clothing money faith love forgiveness a husband if you're praying for a husband God knows about that focus on God opposed to your list of what a perfect man or woman depending on where you stand in, in, you know, in the world, what that is. Third point, no need to worry because what we really need is him. And that really goes to what I said earlier, you know, at the beginning. Where my focus was on, oh, I'm going to be practicing this crazy faith, I'm believing, I'm believing, I started to believe more on the list of things that I was praying for than him. So verse 25, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is it not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap. They don't gather into barns, yet the heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more valued than them? Now this, hmm. This, I actually, during one of my quiet times, I was walking and I saw birds just living their best life in the air, living their absolute best life. And it took me back to this and I thought, damn, if his eyes is on the, on the sparrow and they're eating good, how about me? And that is not to say, oh my gosh, God, you're looking after the birds and not me. No, he exactly is looking after me. And the focus, what I've been learning in my quiet time, is really that that focus has to be on him opposed to the things that I am praying for. Um, verse 
33 but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you so I'm believing I'm adding that onto my faith this is not a new scripture to me but completely different meaning especially in these times and I really hope that it blesses anyone who is listening you know to shift your focus from the worry onto him because one it adds nothing onto your life two there's no need to worry because God's doing his thing so why are we trying to do the thing for him and three he wants us to focus on him god bless